Hello students. In this video, let us start the Peninsular Plateau. The Peninsular Plateau consists of the two main plateau of, plateaus of India, that is the Malava Plateau and the Deccan Plateau. So let us learn about them in detail. Identify the Narmada River on the map of India. So here, I just zoom this in so you can see better. So here we can see river Narmada and its tributaries. Okay. The Narmada Sone Rift Valley divides the peninsular plateau into two major parts. So this is the river Narmada and the Sone River it flows from the north like this. So as you can see it is dividing the peninsular plateau into two major parts. One part as shown in pink is over this side of the river that is the north of the Narmada Son rivers and the next part is to the south of the Narmada and Son rivers. Okay, the northern part is called as the Malwa Plateau and the southern part is called as the Deccan Plateau. The Aravali range lies to the northwest of the Malwa Plateau and Vindhyas to the south. So these two are mountain ranges. As you can see here, the Aravali range is to the north of the Malwa Plateau. So this is the Malwa Plateau. And the Vindhya, you can see here, this is the Vindhya Mountains and they lie to the south of the Malwa Plateau. Next, Mount Gurushikar, as you can see here, it's the highest peak in the Aravalis. Okay. Next, the Satpura, Maikala, Rajmahal, Amarakantaka ranges lie to the north of the Deccan Plateau. Okay. So, let me zoom this in again so you can see better. So, here if you zoom it in, you will you, you'll be able to see the Satpura ranges. Let me just remove this so you can see the Satpura ranges. So, here we can see the Satpura ranges. Close to the Satpura ranges, we can see other ranges also such as the Maikala, Rajmahal, Amarkantak. Okay. Next, the Western Ghats are in the West and Eastern Ghats are in the East. So, you can also see the Eastern and Western Ghats. So, these are the Western Ghats and these are the Eastern Ghats. The Annamalai, Kardamam and Palani Hills are to the South of the Western Ghats. So, all these they are present in the south of the Western Ghats. Next, the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats meet at the Nilgiri Hills. So, the Nilgiri Hills are found here. The Nilgiri Hills are found here. Okay. Udagamandalam or Uti. So, Udagamandalam or Uti is a famous hill station and it is situated here. So, Uti is famous for its pleasant temperature, pleasant weather and many other things such as tea plantations, chocolate, etc. So, just see here an image of Uti. As you can see, it's a very beautiful place. Uti is also famous for its Nilgiri trees and the hill station where the eastern and western ghats meet as we saw in our textbook. So this hill station over here is where eastern and western ghats meet that is also present in Uti. Many rivers of peninsular India have their source in the western ghats. So many rivers in the south India they have their source in the western ghats. Let us check out our map once again. You can see here, there are a number of rivers that are taking birth in the Western Ghats. So, I will zoom it in even more so we can observe Western Ghat in detail. So, firstly, we have River Godavari with one starting point here, near the Western Ghats. Okay, over here. Next, we have River Krishna also that is taking birth in Western Ghats and then slowly flowing and flowing towards the Bay of Bengal. Next, we also have River Kaveri here that is taking birth in the Western Ghats and etc. 
So as we can see, many rivers take birth in the Western Ghats. Next, let us learn about the characteristics of the plateau. It is an upland with an extensive, almost level surface, which is bound by steep slopes. I will just show you an image so that you will understand it clearly. So this is a typical example of the landform found in the Deccan Plateau and the Malwa Plateau. Okay, so the Peninsula Plateau have landforms that look like this. Okay, the, this landform is an extensive area of relatively flat land. So similar to the Northern Plains, even the Deccan Plateau and the Malwa Plateau have flat lands, but they are bound by steep slopes. The Deccan Plateau is the largest plateau in India. It is made up of ancient hard rocks. Next, let us move on to the advantages of the Peninsular Plateau. So the Peninsular Plateau is rich in minerals. The rivers flowing across it are helpful for cultivation of crops. So let us take a look at the graph we have here. So as you can see, there are a number of rivers that are flowing in the Deccan Plateau, including Godavari, Krishna, Kaveri, Mahanadi, Narmada, Tapi, and of course the Zona River that, are, that is flowing from the north. So all these rivers, they help in cultivation. We have learned in our previous video in Northern Plains about how rivers are very important for humankind that is living in the banks of the rivers. So similarly, even in the Peninsular Plateau, we have a number of rivers that are flowing in which make it helpful for cultivation. Next, there are many waterfalls which are useful for the generation of hydroelectricity. So hydroelectricity can be generated using the force of the falling water from the waterfall. One such project in Karnataka is found in the river Sharavati, which then drains into the Jog Falls. So this is an image of Jog Falls and it is formed from the river Sharavati. So the Sharavati River and Jog Falls is used for the generation of hydroelectricity. This is present in Shumoga in Karnataka. Next, it is favorable for agriculture, rearing of animals and industries. Because of the presence of water and the presence of the plain lands, the land here is very favorable for agriculture, rearing of animals and industries. Next, several empires also ruled in the peninsular plateau. The Rashtrakutas, Chalukyas, Hoysalas, Vijayanagaras, Kadambas, Gangas and Bahamani Sultans established their empires here. You will be studying more about them in your higher classes. Next, mention the names of the two important Plato's found in India. So we have the very easy answer to this one. The first one is the Malwa Plateau and the next one is Okay, let me just provide the correct spelling as provided in the textbook. It's the Malwa Plateau and the next one is the Deccan Plateau. Next, mention the important historical places located in the Peninsular Plateau. So I have already given a list of some places. Here we have the Golconda Fort which is in Hyderabad. The stone chariot and the Vitala temple in Hampi, Karnataka, the Chanakeshava temple in Belur, and the cave temples of Badamni, both of them in Karnataka. Okay, you can add on to this list if you find any important historical places that are located in the peninsular plateau. So this is the end of this module. So we have completed the peninsular plateau. I will see you all in the next video.